Oh, amen, because this is so slow. All right. Primary purpose today is to practice for the quiz for tomorrow, okay? That being said, we are going to whoops, look for just a second at this worksheet. This is not on the quiz tomorrow, and it's not in the homework check until next week, but basically this is your homework for the weekend, okay? Because everything else is due tomorrow. There is no worksheet on tomorrow's homework check. It is just assignment on 1.3, page 30, and 1.4, page 41, okay? That's it. Two book assignments. Um, this is a puzzle. I think you might reuse the things over there. Um, if we did number one super fast, it already has a common denominator, so you'd combine like terms up on top, or you'd, I mean, subtract, do what I, okay, what would you get on the top? Okay, there we go, x squared minus 4, and you keep the denominator, and it's not one of the choices because the top factors, but you can't cancel this, right? You can't just decide to randomly cancel things. Yeah, it's killing kittens, that's right. Once you've factored, then you can cancel whole factors. That's my meme about killing kittens. There's one on the back wall that says, if you cancel things, you can't just kill the kitten. Um, All right. Somebody pick another problem for me to do anywhere on the worksheets. Twelve? Okay, number 12. We need to figure out what the common denominator is, so we want to factor this denominator, which factors x minus 2 and x minus 3. So now what is the common denominator going to have? Yep. We don't want to mess with this top. It doesn't factor anyway. But over here, this already had an x minus 3 in the denominator, so we need to multiply it by what? And x minus 2, and whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top so that we're actually multiplying by a form of 1. That actually puts two of these up top, but that's okay. Now, in order to subtract all this and combine like terms, we're going to have to foil these together. Do you remember doing this fun last year? It was like everybody's least favorite section in the rationals yeah. chapter because everybody hates common denominators. Okay, foil these together and what do we get? X squared minus 2X minus 2 more X. And then a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a plus 4. Now I put parentheses because what does everybody forget to do? Yeah, we got to subtract all of that, so we have to subtract each term here. I'm confusing myself here. I forgot to write the common denominator. There we go. All right, so the top becomes an x squared minus 3x plus 1. I'm distributing the negative carefully. I get a minus x squared plus 4x and a minus 4. Then what? There's nowhere near enough room on the paper, I realize that. You're going to have to use an extra sheet, probably. Combine like terms up top, and what happens? Don't I get a 1x and a minus 3? Then what can I do? Okay, this whole quantity, and I have left what? Is that one of the choices? Yep. What? You do reuse? Okay. I thought you did. Thanks. Is there one more you want me to do or you got it? It's up to you. Nobody saying anything? Okay. Which one? Eleven? Okay, so this has a denominator right now of just 1. So this needs to be multiplied by an x minus 2y over an x minus 2y. 
so that it will have an x minus 2y in the denominator. This is another minus in the middle, which messes everybody up because you have to remember you're distributing it. Okay, so the new is going to have an x minus 2y. What does this one become, guys? x squared minus 2xy. We good? Now distribute your negative here. So you have a minus 2y squared plus an xy. Somehow I don't think that's the choice. Okay, if we combine like terms, what do we have? Yep, this, it, students generally don't like factoring with two variables, but just, there aren't that many choices, guys. X squared had to be what? An X and an X. 2Y squared had to be 1Y squared and, or 1Y and, the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1, and they each needed a Y. Now, the signs are a little bit trickier, but I need a negative 1 in the middle. So I think I need a negative 2 and a positive 1. Does that work? So then what happens? We run out of room, right? This whole factor cancels and we're left with x plus y, which is, is that the one that's kind of cut off? It's supposed to be an O for the puzzle, okay? All right, now I'm going to switch over to review and for the quiz. I'm going to look at this worksheet first as review for the quiz. For this first problem, I'm going to estimate only, okay? Because I want us to save some time, not type it in the calculator. Does that sound like a plan? So. Just pretend this was a test question and I didn't even give you the equation. I only gave you the graph, okay? Can you estimate some things? It, I won't be super picky tomorrow if you don't write them as ordered pairs, but I like them as ordered pairs. Y-intercept, anybody find that? Want to estimate that? Okay. Zero. I think it's maybe 18, but I can't remember. We'll go with 18. How would you find it exactly, algebraically? Plug in zero. But this is a hot mess because we have to plug it in a million places. So, <laughs> all right. Minimum, maximum. Just give me an estimate here. What do you want to call this guy over here? That sounds good to me. And this maximum up here? Sounds good. We don't have to be too accurate. All right. Would you have known how to do all those on the calculator, guys? Yeah. Okay. You know how to find the zero, left, right, left and right bound. You know how to find minimums, maximums. Y-intercept, you just do trace zero. All right. There's one more critical point we could label before we get started. Does anybody remember what it is? The inflection point. Let me talk about that real quick. This is probably the hardest for students to get, but guys, remember these two shapes are just called what? Concave up, like a smiley face. And these two are concave down. I am not going to give you any crazy business. I know, I think it was Morgan found one in the homework that kind of does this and you're like, is there a concave down spot in there or is this all concave up? It's kind of confusing. 
okay? You'll, you'll figure it out in calculus. I probably would have just said that's all concave of, okay? I, I'm not going to give you anything tricky like that. I'm going to give you something like this or something like this where there's clearly some parts that are down right in here, right? Or on this one, there's this part is down and this part is up over here. Right? I'm not trying to be tricky. Sometimes it might look tricky if you don't choose an appropriate window on some of them. But all right, back here, where do you want to put our inflection point? We could pick negative one and zero. Just to be difficult, I'm going to pick it a little bit further up here. I'm going to pick like negative point eight. Is that ten? Okay. Just because I want to have it different so that you're not confused. I would have accepted negative one zero totally because it's an estimate of this. All right. Now I'm going to call on some people. Let's see if Cassidy can tell me something about uh, either increasing or decreasing. You pick one. Okay, you want to do concave up, is that what you said? Okay, so concave up is this whole side over here, guys, right? You use the inflection point to do that. I picked this inflection point, Cassidy, so I'm going to stop mine at negative 0.8. If you had picked that 0, 0.18 as your inflection point, 0 would have been fine. She said negative 4, though. It actually goes concave up all the way to the left, so you do negative infinity. So you had the right idea for concave up. You just want x values, and I would have gone negative infinity. You need to go negative infinity because all of this is happy. And tell whatever inflection point you picked. Okay? All right, so concave down. Anybody got that one? Let's see. How about Kirsten? Yep, just the other side of this one. It just had one inflection point, so it has one spot, can't give up one, can't give down. All right, back to increasing and decreasing. Do you remember how that goes? Take your finger, start at the far left, and what's it doing as you trace? It's decreasing, so how do we write that first stretch? Omar, can you tell me where it starts off decreasing over here? Good job, and tell. Yes, you use x values. Perfect. So that was decreasing. Somebody, Michaela, can you tell me then what it does? Uh, you pick. I don't care. Somewhere. Somewhere else it's increasing or decreasing. I don't care. So all of this is, so it starts going up at negative 2.8, right? And where does it stop going up? Yep, perfect. So negative 2.8 is increasing all the way to 1.5. Everybody okay? X values where it was going up. And Camden, where is it? What's left? Any more increasing, decreasing? Um, yep. Perfect. One, one point five. You were quick to infinity. <laughs> you knew I was going to do it wrong, right? <laughs> I knew it wrong. All right. Um, end behavior. What does the first line say? G says, as x approaches negative infinity, it means we're on the left. And what's it doing on the left? Okay. You can write infinity or positive infinity. I don't care. Okay. Same thing for me. Uh, positive infinity or the right end is doing what? It's 
going down. All right, are we okay? Now, shall we do one where we practice this with the calculator or? Okay, let's use the calculator to do number two real quick. Can you type this in and find all those maximums and minimums? What would be a really good window? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if you use like negative 75, then you'll have a little extra room down here. But negative 5 to 5 and negative 75 to 50 is a great window. So I went to y equals and I typed it in just like it is written up there with all those factors and parentheses and garbage. And then I did negative 5 to 5. And negative 75 to 50 for my window. And once you get that typed in, start finding some of those values for me. Can you find the zeros by just looking up here? Because it's in factored form, what are all the values that are going to make these zero? Zero. Negative four and positive three. Does that look like it's going to agree with our graph? So rather than finding the zeros, we just use the fact that it was factored. Y-intercept? Where's it crossing the y-axis, guys? We already listed it. Zero, zero. Okay. I do not, on the quiz, specify between relative and absolute maxes and mins. I don't... It just says find the maximum minimum points, okay? This actually has only one relative min and one absolute min. Yes? Do you see what I'm talking about? I would just list them both here, though, okay? The absolute min is which one? The one on the far left over here? No, that's a zero. The minimum? Yes, this is the relative minimum. It is at three zero. You're right. Okay, the absolute one is somewhere over here between negative 5 and, I'll just be lazy and put 0. I got negative 2.64 and negative 57.1. Does that sound okay? Negative 2.6 and negative 57.1. If I'm lazy and just do one place, I think it says to the nearest hundredth or two places on the quiz tomorrow. The other one was at three zero. Did anybody find the maximum yet? Anybody having trouble? Ladies, you good on the calculator back there? 1.1 and 10.1. All right, should we wait on the inflection points or you want to estimate those now and then I can put my calculator away here? How many inflection points is this going to have? Between this max and min, there's one. Let, let me do this real quick. This graph goes like this. And then it goes like this. And then it goes like this again, yes? The W. So it has happy, sad, happy. Does everybody see that? I kind of exaggerated it so you can see it. So now we got to go back and look. Somewhere in here, can I just pick right there? Type negative 1 on your calculator. What do you get? Negative 1, negative 24? I just picked, you could have picked... Zero, zero, you could have picked something down here, clear down here at negative two, I would have said fine. 
Okay. Where's the other one? Yeah, somewhere over at 2. What does it come up if you type a 2 in your calculator? 2, 6. Remember, guys, you want to type it in as a trace because you want to actually give me a point that's on the graph, not just a random ordered pair, you know. 2, 0. Well, that's not even on the graph. All right, ready? Who can tell me? Tanner Combs, can you tell me something else? I don't care, you pick. Okay. Yep, the maximum up here. Yeah, he did x values. I just don't have them labeled on my graph. It's much harder, I think, when it's not labeled on the graph. But it is from the min to the max. It was increasing or going up that entire, you just go left to right. Everybody okay? All right. Um, who do we got? Emerald, can you tell me something? Got that one. <laughs> It's doing what? Decreasing. Negative infinity to negative 2.6. Everybody all right? That branch was going down as I went left to right. Jared, what do you want to tell me? Over here it's increasing again from 3 to infinity. Perfect. Uh, Katie LaRue, what else? Okay, so Katie was talking about this little stretch in here. It's going down. All right, who wants end behavior? Kate, can you tell me end behavior on this one? And. Okay, both ends are going up. We good? All right. What about concave? Do I need to flip to that other screen? Okay, go ahead, Besma. Okay, so concave up, she's talking about from this inflection point around. That's definitely happy. Morgan, can you give me a concave up or down spot? That is all one shape, but look, from negative infinity to negative one, is that happy or sad? Yeah. So it's concave up from negative infinity to negative one. But that was a good interval. Riley Martin, tell me something I don't know. And those were our inflection points, right? The X is from inflection point to inflection point. That's this stretch in here. Everybody okay? Now, that's worth a lot of points on the quiz. There is one question like this where you have to do it all yourself on the calculator, and it asks most of those. But then there's most of the rest of the quiz is multiple choice. And the multiple choice questions, there might be one where I gave you a picture of a graph and I say, tell me where the critical points are. Or I give you an equation of a graph and I say, type it in and tell me where it's increasing or decreasing. Okay? All right. The back side of this worksheet, if you want to mess around with these, you can. You can take pictures of the answer key. It is in the binder. But you don't have, I'm not going to ask you one that has weird constant strep like this on the quiz, okay? Uh, it is, it does have, well, it's a piece, it's a piecewise function, and actually the far right of the graph is approaching five. Anybody know how, I, three, I lied. How did I come up with that value? The piecewise here says it's at three, right? All right. This is not a worksheet I'm going to collect. So if you want to do more practice, go right ahead. 
this is the rest of the slides I have for you about the quiz. Is there anything on this screen that you want me to review? Difference of cubes? Okay. Um, give me, let's see, I think I'm, I would never pick this on a quiz, but 729 I think is 9 to the third. Somebody check me out. And 216, well, no, that, that would, they would both, be, you'd be able to pull out a three then. Let's not even go there. Um, let's just do 27. No, you can still pull out a three. Five, 125. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, got a little excited. Those are perfect cubes, big perfect cubes that I would not normally put on a quiz. But do you remember the pattern? How does the pattern go? Cube root everything, so you get mm, no. You, it's a pattern you had to memorize. Square this one, and you get what? This goes at the back, and in the middle goes forty-five m. And the sign always changes. Okay. One more. Somebody, I'll do with a plus this time, but somebody give me a cube. Plus uh, 27n cubed. Ooh, I'm going to be mean. Can you do it? What's the cube root of those? Okay. For x squared at the front, the back is? And the middle is one of each. Six. I guess alphabetically be an x, but x then is fine. I don't care. And the sign changes to minus, yes? Okay. All right, distance, midpoint, equation of a line. We're good with all those? Look them up if you're not, right? All right, here are some more of the things that are on the quiz. You have to be able to state whether something is a function or not. Is number two a function? How would you tell? Do the x's repeat? So this is a function. Which is one that's not? This fails the vertical line test, right? Okay. I'm skipping around a little bit here. All right. There's a question like this, and it's kind of tricky. I'm going to make this actually say 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 5, and x is greater than or equal to 5, and I'm going to put a 3x down here. All right. So there's a question like this, and this is what it says. It says, is this graph discontinuous where? And it says, um, negative 3, 2, 5, and 7. Okay, multiple choice question. Where is it discontinuous? It jumps at one of those places, okay? This is how you would do this. Everywhere below 2, it's doing this shape. What is this shape, guys? It's a parabola. It's a parabola that has an open circle right at 2 because it doesn't equal this. It's open at 2 comma what? If I put a 2 in there, I get out... Everybody, I went fast, but are you okay with me? Okay. Then it jumps at 2, actually at 2. Where is it? As a closed circle at 212, because you put the 2 in here. So guess what? Did we just find the discontinuous spot? It's discontinuous at 2. But let's keep going. It, it is what shape here? A straight line until it gets to almost 5. 
So at 5, it would have an open circle. At 5, what? If you put a 5 in here, you'd get out a 15. So it's a line until 515. But then here it says it picks up with at 5, right? This would have a solid circle at 5. And what value do you get when you put a 5 in here? Oh, so 515 is actually continued in the graph, contained in the graph. It's doing 3x, which just means it gets steeper. Okay. So the only spot where it jumped was at 2. There's one question. Just put in all the little points that it says, and somewhere you'll see that from one branch to the next it jumps, okay? Now, do you want me to back this up so I, my picture isn't so scribbly? And you could take a picture of that or not? Anybody need to? You okay? All right. Um, I, we hit the graph thing pretty hard already. I think we're good? All right, let me keep going and talk about some other stuff here. Um, there's a question. It's not exactly like this, but it's similar. This one says, what is the average speed? The one in the quiz says more like, here's some crazy profit function. And between these two years, what was the average uh, profit? Okay. It's just asking average rate of change. So the first two seconds would mean from second zero to second two. You remember how to do this? So if you put in a zero, you get out 80, yes. If you put in a two, um, 16. Then what do you do? Okay. So 80 minus 16 over zero minus two is 64 over negative 2, so it's negative 32 feet per second, is the average speed between those two points in time. If I picked second 1 and second 2, it would actually probably be faster because it's accelerating, it's dropping towards the ground, okay? It's what we call, we just, it's an average speed between two particular points that we chose. All right, um, increasing, decreasing, you just graph this and pick the right choice. These questions, these multiple choice practice, guys, do you remember if you go to the book and you log in and you pick student edition and you get the textbook, remember this? Mm -hmm. You can go to section one, section one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. You pick this little X at the bottom and it brings up, yeah, if you log in, shoot. It brings up this little, I lied. What's going on here, guys? I don't need a. Should have brought up. Oh, I'm in the teacher, that's why. It should have brought up this little symbol. Okay. And then it brings up this. Remember we talked about this? It gives hints. At the very bottom, it lets you check your answers. If you check your answers, and you, then it tells you get one wrong. It tells you look at this example on this page to figure out why it's wrong. Okay? All right, that's where I got all these questions. Now... I'm going to skip to some things we haven't talked about yet because we have not reviewed. Go ahead. Yes. We have not. Do you need me to do this one? Average rate of change on this interval? You got it? Just put, plug them in and find the slope? Yes. Yes. You put in a negative 2 in here. So you go negative 2 cubed plus 2 times negative 2 minus 8. That becomes... Negative 20. Did I get that right, guys? Then you put in the 3 here. So you'd have 3 cubed plus 6 minus 8 is 27, 25. 
and then you do the slope. So 25, I'm going bottom to top this time. It doesn't matter which way you go, but you do the y's over the x's. This becomes 45 over 5 is 9, which is choice D. Make sure you do change in y over change in x, though, okay? All right. Also on the quiz are questions like this, find domain and range. Can you pick the right one for this one? Left, it is a closed open circle here. And the range is bottom to top would be negative three, two. And they were nice, and it, it includes zero because over here there's a solid circle, but all the choices had that. So it's C. Even and odd? What does even mean? An even function means it has y-axis symmetry. Do you remember the test? Even is y-axis symmetry. Y-axis means you replace every x with a negative x. And it stays the same. Anybody know which choice it is? Which one? D? B? This one has a power of 1 right here. So even, odd, even. Yeah, this is a degree 4. This would be an x to the 0. It is A. But you could graph those, okay? Odd has what kind of symmetry? Mm -mm. X-axis would not be a function. Would have origin symmetry. Uh, I think it's A again because A has both odd. Okay. The test for odd symmetry is you replace X with the opposite and Y with the opposite. You don't have to know the tests on this quiz. You do on the next quiz. All right. Um, there is not an answer here that works. Just let me know that these aren't always right on this silly thing. Y-axis symmetry, anybody pick one? B. Um, what about this? This is on the quiz. Put in a 2B squared. So you'd have 2B squared squared minus 4 times 2B squared. Okay. What if it had said this? You'd have x minus 3 squared minus 4 times x minus 3, and then you got to foil it out. Okay. Just warning you, might be one like that. Um, which one is a function? B. Put in a negative 2. Everybody okay with one like this? You just plug in the value in. Has a critical point at 3. Anybody recognize this? Think about the graph. This is kind of a hard question, but where's the vertex of this? So it's a problem that opens down, right? If that's 3, 4, what is that point going to be called? Yeah, 3, 4 is a ooh, absolute maximum. There's not a question like that, but that's a good question. <laughs> All right, we reviewed and have five minutes left. You guys are amazing. No other class today even got through all the review. Do you want me to go back and look at any more of these? Are you good? You, yes? Let's talk about this one. I'm going to stop.